evening, everybody, and welcome to worship tonight on our third Wednesday in Lent as we continue our series of looking at Lent through the lens of art and engaging in the practice of visio divina. I'll invite you to open to your hymnals to page 320 as we begin our nightly prayer service. Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High. To herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. So now we'll do the night hymn. Uh, turn to 565, All Praise to Thee, My God This Night. Turn back to page 321, and it'll be the confession and forgiveness spoken portion. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned by my own fault in thought, word, and deed. I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Almighty and merciful God, 
grant you healing, pardon, and forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned by my own fault in thought, word, and deed. I pray, God Almighty, to have mercy on me. Forgive me all my sins and bring me to everlasting life. Almighty and merciful God, grant you healing, pardon, and forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. So now we will do, uh, we will sing the psalm, and it is Psalm 57. So you want to skip ahead a little bit to Psalm 57, and it'll, it's um, a new psalm tone this tonight uh, as compared with the last couple of weeks. So Carol will play, it's tone number two, um, but you can hear it once, and then um, I'll sing the odd verses, and you can sing the even verses, so you'll get a chance to hear it once. But here is the psalm tone. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful, for I have taken refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge until this time of trouble has gone by. I will call upon the Most High God, the God who is with me to thee. Send from heaven and save me, rebuking those who trample upon me. You will send your forth your love and your faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions that devour the people. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongue a sharp sword. Exalt yourself above the heavens, O God, and your glory over all the earth. They have laid a net for my feet, and I am bowed low. They have dug a pit before me, but have fallen into it themselves. My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Wake up, my spirit, awake, lute and harp. I myself will wake in the dawn. I will give thanks to you among the peoples, O oh Lord. I will sing praise to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is greater than the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the Exalt yourself above the heavens, O oh God, and your glory over all the earth. And now, song, Go to Dark Gethsemane, number 347.
Our reading for this evening comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he, so if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? Here ends our reading. Welcome to another evening of Visio Divina. Tonight's story, we are found in the garden, the Garden of Gethsemane. And so, as has been our custom over these past couple weeks, I invite you into holy seeing. Our first uh, artwork for this evening, I is an El Greco. So for those of you who know art, that's all I know. This is it by El Greco. So I would invite you to this, into this time of seeing. Remember, what do you notice? What speaks to you? What sticks out to you? So I'll give you a little bit and then we'll come back. You can totally talk to each other too. What do you notice? The angel bringing the cup. The angel bringing the cup, yeah. Jesus says, this is the cup I must drink. Mm -hmm. I can't really see what is down on the very right. Is that just where you're in there? Right here? Yeah. This would be Judas and the centurions coming. They have little, little spears. Okay. Yeah, it's...
yep, this would be the night in Gethsemane. He said, please stay awake and keep watch while I go and, and pray. And they were found sleeping. Hanging out over here. The bright light shining down on him, yeah. What? Yeah, it's not the moon because the moon is over here. Yeah, Arlene, did you want to? What are the like etching things on the rock above Jesus' head? This? Yeah. Is it just moss or something, or is it writing or? Um. Yeah, I'm wondering, it kind of looks like maybe it's foliage. Like if you look down on Jesus' right, there's, uh, there's also a little bit of foliage. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, it looks like leaves, yeah. Yep. The tree with leaves. So I don't know if any of you are, you know about the, uh, what, the, I don't know what you call it, the art of colors or whatever, um, the color colorology of of sacred art. Um, but Jesus always wears red with blue over him. The red is his humanity and his blood, and the blue is divinity. And so you'll see here that he has shed his divinity. That's what stuck out to me when Pastor Tim showed this picture, this artwork to me. And how the angel over there is in gold, which is another sign of divinity. Yeah, I don't know if the angel has a special name or anything like that. Um, I think, well, I have no answers. My interpretation would just be that um, the angel is a messenger who brings forth the cup of which Jesus is to drink. But I could also be interpreting that completely wrong. Which is one of the beautiful things about art. So what does this stir up in you? beautiful in an awful way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he's preparing. He knows what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. He's preparing. He knows what's going to happen. Hmm? Mm -hmm. yep. Rescuing us from the dark. Yeah. <coughs> well, he's looking up. Mm -hmm. He's looking up. Yep. Yep, his strength and his help will come from above, yeah. A way of surrendering, yeah. Feeling very human, yeah. Yeah. Well. When was this written? When was this drawn? That's a very good question. I'm not an art history major. I know El Greco. I think it's E L El Greco. Aaron's going to try, uh, the garden, I don't know. See, this is Pastor Tim's thing. I'm just filling in last minute, because as there's an app for that, it's like holding your phone. <laughs> well, while she is looking for that, um, I would like to lead us in a bit of a prayer, um, a prayer for the times when we are in a garden like this in our own lives. So. 
Let us pray. Holy God, God of the mountains and the valleys in our lives, we thank you for your son who has taken the cup that he must drink, for the divinity that he shed for us and for our salvation. God, in the midst of betrayal, in the midst of resignation, in the midst of those times in our lives when we can't imagine going forward, we thank you for being there for us, just as you were with Jesus in the garden. Help us to turn our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to you, knowing that our strength, our courage, and our hope lie in you. We pray in your name. Amen. Get back to you on the year. Is there another picture, John? Okay. This one's a little bit busier. Same garden scenario. What do you notice? The El Greco was in 1590, right? 90? 1590. Yep. Yes, so the El Greco, the previous one, was an oil painting, I learned. So, I unfortunately don't know who did this one. Um. Mm-hmm, yes. Yep, so we, so we have Judas here, betraying with a kiss. What else do we notice in this painting? Hmm? Chaos. Chaos, right? There's a lot going on here. Mm -hmm. Yep, the disciple. I'm guessing these are the disciples, the followers of Jesus. Yeah, except for Peter. You see him down there? Yeah, so that's, yep, so we have Peter chopping off an ear. No, it's not. It's not nice. Hmm? What's with, what's with the string? That's a good question. Huh? Oh, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, are they tying Jesus up, maybe? A rope to lead him off with, maybe? Not to bring us back to the other one, but you'll notice in this picture, Jesus has both his blue and his red on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the humanity over the divinity. Some have shoes, and some don't. What, what does this stir up in you? What kind of emotions bubble to the surface? A little bit of anxiety. I was thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. Along with the chaos, see, there's there's anxiety, there's uncertainty. Yep, they brought a lot of the the army officials and right. like a big, right. yeah, they brought a lot of soldiers to, right. they know exactly yeah, to arrest yeah. a man of peace. Yeah. yeah. Yep. 
Yep, the disciples, as soon as, as, soon as there's trouble brewing, they kind of take off, which, you know, is a human, human response, a human response that we all, we all share. Yeah. I know um, it's probably isn't a profound comment, but as we were looking at these pieces of artwork, <clears throat> Pastor Tim is like, I'm like, oh, there's Peter, you know, chopping off the ear. Um, which, you know, later on Jesus heals and says, you know, don't, don't do that. Um, but Pastor Tim is like, Peter, he is looking up at Jesus as if to say, like, am I doing this right? Or look, I'm doing this for you. Yeah. Or is he looking at the disciples leaving and thinking, why are you leaving? Oh, or is he looking at the disciples leaving saying, why are you leaving? Hmm, Maybe. Yep, everyone is more focused on Jesus. Yeah. So, ever since our Advent journey together with Holy Curiosity, I've been finding that I ask the question, why, a lot. So, when we talk about, like, why bring so many soldiers to arrest a man of peace? Like, why would, you know, trying to put yourselves in their shoes, like, why? And my, my initial response is out of fear, right? They bring numbers out of fear. And what is it that they fear? You know, not that necessarily this person is going to be violent because they know he is a man of peace. Um, but what, what do we do when we fear? I mean, I, over, I try to over-prepare, overcompensate, do as much as I can. Safety for them and numbers. Yep, safety in numbers, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, unsure of he has done miracles in, in the past. What is he capable of? Yeah. And he had a lot of power, yeah. This one? Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. The halos. Yep. Yep. Yeah, the halos distinguish them. Yeah. I noticed that the facial expressions of everyone are very agitated and panicked, except for Jesus, who was just very calm and accepted. Yep, everybody is very agitated and panicked, except for Jesus. There's a lot going on. Any last observations before we pray? Okay, let us pray. God of the garden, in the midst of the chaos that swirls around us, and can cause us to go into panic and frenzy, you are the calm. In the midst of the chaos that occurred in the garden that evening, you were the calm. God, when we get overwhelmed and feel like fleeing, still our hearts and our minds and grant us your courage and peace. God, help us to feel safe in you and not safe in numbers. 
May we, like Jesus, be an agent of your peace and your love, not just here in this community, but around the world. We pray in your holy and precious name. Amen. So we will return to page 323, and we will sing the gospel response, and then on to a hymn after that. Into your hands, O Lord, I command my spirit. Turn to page 201. Yes, hymn 201. Now, Lord. our offering now.
Now the prayers on page 325. Hear my prayer, O Lord, listen to my cry, keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings, in righteousness I shall see you. When I awake, your presence will give me joy. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of life may find our rest in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we'll sing the Lord's Prayer that at, starts at the bottom of page 326. blessing. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty and merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep us this night and forever. 